He's a doctor, not an escalator. Hey, what's up, my peoples? MGO here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Planet X Vigovis. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, we have a nice image of Ratchet. That's what I'm going to call him for the rest of the video, Ratchet, with his glowy, glowy eyes. On the side of the box, we have Ratchet. On the other side of the box, we have Ratchet. On the top here, Vigovis. On the other side of the box, Vigovis. On the back, you have your obligatory product shots. Warning, don't eat anything in this box. That could be very bad for you. You have QR codes. You want to scan them? Go ahead, scan them. Facebook stuff, things. And that's basically it for the packaging. Also included is a collector's card with that same image there of Ratchet. And on the back, you have his alt mode and you have his tech specs. If that interests you, hooray for cards. And moving right along, here we have Vejovis. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right. I don't care. <laughs> but this is Planet X's take on War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, Ratchet. And as you can see, it looks just like their Ironhide because, of course, Ratchet and Ironhide are always basically the same body with some slight differences. And this figure does have some slight differences to it. So here he is in his vehicle mode. Let's get in closer so we can take a look. That's the details. You got that black up front with that nice pink. Got the trans clearance. Very dark red trans clearance plastic right there for the cockpit section. You have some red up top. And you have those nice details picked out in silver this time. Back here, these details are picked out in that gunmetal gray. Got black here for the windshields. Taillights are picked out. All around, I still think it's a very cool design, no matter who's wearing it. And there's the top, there's the bottom, he rolls, as rolling things should. Hooray for rolling and sliding and spinning, get back, yeah. So there you have that. And for comparison, uh, here he is with Ironhide, and as far as vehicle mode goes, um, they are the exact same, the only difference is just the coloration. So now let's talk about accessories. He only includes one accessory right here. He does come with an Energon Harvester, and I do quite like this. There is a bit of assembly required with this. Uh, this, this front section here is made up of, uh, the black section of it anyway is made up of three pieces that you have to screw together. They give you the screws and they also give you a little, uh, little screwdriver, which is always so considerate. They just th uh, screw the three pieces together. They take these little transparent pieces and they just peg into the back here. So a little bit of assembly required with the Energon Harvester, but still pretty cool. And you have this section here, again with a little bit of pink, transparent red, and that just plugs right on. And you have your Energon Harvester, but I think that's really cool looking. I dig it. I dig it. Now as far as storage, you know, just like with Ironhide, you have these ports on either side here, so you can always just take it and just kind of plug it onto the side like that. It's kind of ridiculous, but hey, it's something to do if you want to do it. You know, hey, storage. But there you have that. And that is basically it for the vehicle mode, so let's get down to transformation, shall we? Hey, get good spins out of these guys. So, as you can guess, the transformation is exactly the same as Ironhide. We just come down here, we bring up what will be his toes in robot mode, and we just get in here, and we just pull this whole section down, like so. Come up here, take these sections, and undo those. Bring those up, these black panels here, unpeg from there, and then we can take all this and just give it a little wiggle. That'll all come undone, and we can bring all of this down. And then we can work on his legs. Uh, but first we need to separate some other stuff here. We need to separate his feet. And again, you have a little T-tab right there, so you have to bring this one foot up first. And then wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle the legs apart. And there we go. So now... Let me just take this section here, give it a little wiggle waggle, pull it out, rotate it, push it back in, bring the section up, 
bring this section down. This will come down and peg in right there. And we just swing the foot around, rotate so it's facing forward, bring this panel down, and there you have a leg all done. Guess what? Second verse is just like the first. So wiggle, 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 wiggle. Bring that out, rotate, push it back in, bring it up, bring it down. And swing the foot around, rotate, bring this back and peg it in, plug it in, plug it in, bring that down. And there you have the legs all done and then we just rotate them at the waist, 180, and we take little crotchular panels here and just rotate them down. And now we can move on to the upper body. So now we just come to the front here and we just unpeg all of this and give it a little tug. Get in there, just untab, untab, get all that untabbed, unpeg the two halves here. And we got everything freed up so now we can get these arms going, so just bring the arm out slightly, extend it, take the shoulder pad, swing that off to the side, slide this section in, bring the arm down, open up this panel, flip out the hand, close it back up, rotate the hand, and there you have an arm all done, second pass, just like the pass. So let's bring that out, extend. Swing that over, collapse that in, bring it down, open it up, flip it out, close it back up, twist it, and there you have your arms all done. So now, work on the backpack section here, so just pull this up and get his head flipped out, get out, get his head flipped out. And then just rotate this whole backpack section around, like so. And then these sections here will just swing inward, like that, and like that. And then you just flip out this little red piece here, this little filler piece. Come on. Make sure things are not in the way. Come on, man. There we go. Flip that up, so that collapse down. And then we take these little panels here, rotate them so the slots are facing down, and bring them down over his shoulders, like so. And get them all straightened out here. And there you go. There you have Ratchet in his robot mode. And I dig him. I think I dig this version of the mold a bit better. I think I like him better than Ironhide. But, um, yeah. Very nicely done, in my opinion. So let's get in close here so we can take a look now at his chest. That is Noggin. There's the Noggin. You can see. It's a pretty nicely done head sculpt there. Nice blue for the eyes. Let's see the face done in a silver-ish. Nice and Cybertronian looking. You got some new shoulder pieces here. And you do have a new chest piece here with that transparent plastic there in the belly. And everything else is everything we've pretty much already seen, but still worth noting. Got a nice detail on the inside of the legs, picked out in that gunmetal gray. And there's big old feet. And again, the transformation is quite clean. Everything tidies up. Pretty nicely. Now, articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint. You get a good amount there of wiggly waggly. It can look up, can do a total squirrel. Can look down a little bit. Head can do a full 360. Arms can do a full 360. They can move in and out. He can smack himself in the face with his own shoulder. You got bicep rotation. You have under 90 degrees of bend there at the elbow. Wrist rotation, hands can open and close. You have wrist rotation. Let's swing these 
Low panels up to accommodate the leg movement. Legs can move forward that far, back that far, outward that far. You got thigh rotation. You have that much bend at the knee. If you unpeg the knee itself, you get a little bit extra, but you're still not going to get 90 degrees. You can get a little extra range of movement out of the, out of the uh, knees. And the feet, they can move up and down a bit. You got a bit of a toe joint there, it only moves downward, but hey, it's something that moves. And you have your ankle tilted. And of course, we can give him the Energon Harvester. We can plug this into his hand, like so. He does hold that very securely, and that looks that looks pretty intimidating. That that just yeah yeah. Um, in the pictures, I, I in the pictures on the box, I do have him holding it underslung, and I don't know if it's just mine, but he doesn't really want to hold it that way. The way his hand is designed, there's no actual friction when you plug it in from underneath. So that's just kind of eh, no, not really. Not, not really, but you know, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, also, you know, I've seen the pictures of him just holding it by the handle here. Just holding it at his side, you know, like a briefcase there, you know, that's a thing you can do if you want to do it. Um, and again, you can remove this front section here. Don't know if this is intentional, but you can actually like plug this like onto his hand, like that, that does actually work. Again, don't know if that was intentional, but hey, it's a thing you can do. If you want to do it, hey. At first I thought maybe it went over the form, I thought maybe you flipped in his hand and it plugged in that way, but that doesn't work at all. That's just, that's, that's too big, but it does fit over his, over the actual hand here. So, you know, hey, again, then you can do if you want to do it. And again, I, I think that's not intentional because it seems like... So, I don't know. But, I mean, it could be intentional. I don't know. See, because it, sometimes it doesn't hold either. So I think it's just... I don't know. I, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me on this. See, that way it seems to work. See, it goes on snug that way. I think it's just depending on how you plug it in. I don't know. Because this, uh, you can see this section is a little wider than the bottom. So maybe it is just dependent on... Exactly how you plug it on there. There you go. See, that does this. Yep. That holds on securely. So, eh, eh, eh. Again, things you can do if you want to do it. If that's official, if that's on purpose, cool. If not, hey, happy accident. I don't know, but hey. So, there you have that. And now for comparison. Here he is with Planet X's Perceptor and Prime. Here he is with Screamer and the Megs. And here he is with Ironhide. And you can see the obvious differences here. New head, they do have new chest pieces here. Even these little, uh, even these little collapsing side panels are different <laughs> between the two. That's just flat, no detail there. And this has a little bit of mold detail in there. And obviously, the coloration, but there you go. So there you have Ratchet. Um, you know, again, just like I said with Ironhide, very cool figure. So if you like Ironhide, you're probably going to like Ratchet too. And I actually do, I, I think I do like this a bit better than I like Ironhide. But yeah, well done, solid, cool figure from an awesome video game. Me likes, me likes, so. There you go. Now, if you would like this or any of Planet X's other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter. All that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Planet X of Edge of Us, and this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, boom in your face. Roger, I need your help. What is it, Prime? I kinda lost a hand. Dear yeah, Primus, how did you do that? I had a little bit of a mishap with my sword. Wait a second, you accidentally cut off your own hand? 
Are you gonna fix this or not? <sighs> come with me, Prime, come with me. And stay away from the scalpels. You might accidentally cut off your own head. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs>